The washer has completed its cycle. You've got mail. Steve has departed work. Your garage door just opened. Your clothes are dry. Whoop, whoop. I'm sorry if my constant jabbering woke you up. Learn how to control my voice notifications in Home Assistant. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Let me start off by saying this video is not going to be about how to integrate your smart speaker into Home Assistant, whether that be Google or Amazon. Uh, there are lo lots of video and documentation about how to do that, and it's dependent on your particular setup. However, if you do have your smart speaker integrated, and maybe you've been controlling uh, your devices via Home Assistant with the smart speaker, and maybe you've started using voice notifications, like a washer or dryer notification that I covered in another video. But as you add more and more of these voice notifications, it won't be long before one of these voice notifications is going to wake you up on a Saturday morning when you had a chance to sleep in, or maybe on a Sunday afternoon when you're taking one of those much needed naps. So what I'm gonna to show today is how I used automations to create snooze routines and a night mode for my voice notifications. So yes, it's mostly gonna be about automations and I will show both the YAML and how to create those same automations through the Home Assistant UI. So let's start by taking a look at Lovelace, which will help explain how these automations work. Each voice notification that I have has its own toggle button or more or less snooze button. So if I want to snooze these dryer notifications, I simply click the button and in my case, it starts a two hour timer. So after two hours expires, the voice notification will automatically turn back on. Now, of course, you could go to where you have all of your automations listed and find the right one and toggle it off but that's gonna be more difficult for other family members, especially if you have multiple autom automations that look like they have similar names. So by using these big toggle buttons, it's very easy as well for a family member to snooze the notification if you're either in bed or they're going to take a nap. Now, of course, you can always toggle this back on ahead of time before it expires and it will cancel the timer. In addition to each individual a voice notification having a snooze button. There's a master snooze button for all voice notifications. So you notice that when I click that, it automatically snoozes all of my notifications and starts that countdown timer for about two hours. Again, I can toggle these back on at any point in time. Now notice a couple of these didn't come back on. I actually have these buttons manually set up and I always want these to remain off unless I specifically turn them back on. So I'll also show you how you can omit some of your voice notifications from this automation process. And finally, there's a night mode. So every night at 11 p.m., night mode kicks in, which silences all my notifications and will keep them silenced until 8 a.m. the next morning. At 8 a.m. the next morning, night mode turns off and all of your voice notifications are re-enabled. So now let's take a look at how we actually do this in the automations. So let's take a look at a general overview of how each how I have each voice notification set up to be able to, to do these snooze and night modes. Um, for each notification that I have, I need to set up two additional entities or helpers. And I'll show you in a minute how to do that in the UI. But one's going to be an input Boolean or a toggle, it's known as a helper. And I call mine notify and then the device name. So for example, notify washer, notify dryer. And then I also need to create a timer for each one of these. And that I call dryer notify or washer notify. For each main voice notification, you're gonna have a trigger. That's gonna be the event or uh, external device or whatever that, that needs to fire off the voice notification. You're gonna check at least one condition. You're gonna make sure that this helper that you defined is turned on for this voice notification. And then you're going to have your action, which is basically gonna be your output or your uh, announcement to whatever speaker or speakers you want in the house. You're also going to have a trigger for when the device notification is turned off. And again, all we're going to do is anytime that that input Boolean or toggle goes from on to off, we're going to start our snooze timer. In my case, two hours, but it can be any length of time that you like. And then opposite of that is notifications turned back on. And so if we manually take that helper or that input Boolean and we go from off to on, all we're going to do really is we're just going to cancel that timer. If the timer is allowed to expire, then we need an automation that says when the timer is finished, um, 
We want to check the event that when that happens and we want to make sure that our night mode is not turned on. If the night mode isn't turned on, then we're going to take our helper for that device and we're going to turn it back on. That's the general layout. Let's look at a specific example and I'll show you how to recreate this in the uh, Home Assistant UI. Okay, here we are looking at on the this side of the screen is my actual dryer uh, voice notification and over here on the other side I have the uh, Home Assistant UI which you just reached you by going to that and you go to configuration and you'll notice at the top here I see again those two entities are helpers that we need to create. We need to create this input boolean and a timer. So we're going to go here to helpers and we're going to add a helper. In this case remember that input boolean is considered a toggle. It's either on or off. We create a toggle and we simply give it whatever name uh, we want to call. In this case I'm notify dryer. Now you can name these things anything you want but I would recommend that if you're going to have a lot of these notifications you come up with a system and stick to it because when you get a lot of notifications it's a lot easier to manage if you use the same uh, naming scheme throughout all of your different uh, entities and automations. So that's all we would have to do for that and we also need a timer and again we could in this case I call mine dryer notify and you can either uh, set a default here for the duration or you can either set it in the automations. Um, I set mine the notification so I would not put a default here. So we simply add that timer. With that we're done with the helpers that we need for this particular uh, automation. So, so now let's look at the creation of the actual automations themselves. Again our first one is going to be our main voice announcement. To do that we're going to come back in here. We're going to go to automations we're going to add an automation and we're going to start with an empty automation. First thing we do is we simply give this whatever we want to call it. This case, my case, I'm going to call it dryer announce. Okay, and now we need to look at defining the trigger. What's going to cause this announcement to fire off? Again, in our case, we're going to look at a platform or a trigger type of state. Again, we need to know uh, what entity ID we're going to be using. So in, in this case I'm using a sensor of the, based on the dryer state. Um, again if you want to know this is through MQTT. Um, again you can watch my uh, washer and dryer notifications to learn more about that. But we're going to look for this dryer to change the state from drying to finished. So that's what we're going to watch for as the trigger to fire off our uh, dryer announcement. Okay, now we got a couple of conditions. Well, one condition we need to check. Again, we need to make sure that our notification is turned on for this particular dryer announcement and that's through that, again, through that helper. So we're going to add a condition. Our condition type is going to be state and again, what entity we're going to look at? We're going to look for that input boolean or uh, toggle helper of notify Dryer. Again, this is where it's nice to, to have standard uh, naming conventions. It does make it easier to find some of these. We want to make sure the state of that is on. Okay, that's the only condition we've got. Then we add the actual action itself. In this case, we're going to be calling a service. So we're going to come down here to call service. What service are we going to call? In this case, it's TTS. Um, we're going to basically say a message with our Google speakers. We're going to choose all of our home speakers. We could, I could choose one or more individual speakers here if I liked. And then whatever message we want to send. Your clothes are dry. Whoop. Whoop. Okay. And that's it. That would create the same automation using the UI. Let's take a look at what's down here next. Next one is again our notifications off and it follows the same logic as in our general. So again, it's going to follow the same exact process as setting up over here. So again, I'm not going to take time to recreate each of these, but you follow the same thing of giving it a name, setting your trigger, conditions if there are any, and then your action. So you could follow through with the YAML that I've got here um, and just recreate each of those in the uh, uh, through the UI. Let's take a look at the rest of this. Again, here's my notifications off. Again, it follows that general same general template. I'm going to, anytime my 
Input Boolean or helper goes from off to on. I'm going to start my timer for this device and set it at two hours. Okay. Again, if I manually turn that uh, helper from off back to on, I'm just going to cancel my timer. If the timer finishes and expires, again, I've got that's my trigger here. Uh, again, I'm going to double check to make sure that my voice night mode, which we're going to talk about the master in a minute, but it's another helper. We're going to make sure that our voice night mode isn't on. If it isn't, we're simply going to turn that helper back on, and so any uh, future voice notifications will run and make the announcement. Okay, so now we've created our individual voice notifications for each of our different devices. We still need to have that master control to turn all voice notifications off or on or snooze them, and we need that overnight night mode. So to do that, we're going to create a couple of additional helpers. Uh, in the case, two input booleans or two toggle helpers. One of them for our master uh, voice notification control and one for our overnight or our night mode. And then finally, we need another timer for our master notification or our master snooze. So in this case, when our, we turn our voice notifications on, if they've been snoozed, again, that, that uh, helper or the input boolean goes from off to on. All we're going to do is turn all of our input booleans or our toggle helpers for each of our voice notifications. We're going to turn those back on. Now remember I had in Lovelace a couple of those that didn't come back on automatically when I turned the master back on. That's because I've disabled those here and taken them out from the automation because I do always want to manually control those. I list them here to make sure I'm complete and I can obviously just uncomment these or comment out others um, if I want to remove those from the, the master control. Uh, finally, if the, t if the master timer is running, I just simply cancel that. Now this is the one that if we want to snooze all of our voice notifications, um, we're going to turn all of our voice notifications off. Okay, so again, we're going to look, we're going to watch that when our master voice notifications or that input boolean or toggle helper goes from on to off, Again, all we're going to do is go for each of our voice notifications, we're going to turn off its corresponding toggle or helper. And then we're going to start our master timer, in this case, two hours and five minutes. I have it run just a little bit longer just to make sure that something doesn't get missed if they all try to turn back on at the same time. Okay. If our snooze actually expires, our, our two hours and five minutes expires, all we're going to do is first we're going to make sure that our night mode isn't turned on because we don't want all these notifications coming back on in the middle of the night and we're just going to toggle again that master voice notification back on and here is our night mode so at 11 o'clock every night that's going to be our trigger based on time all we're going to do is simply take our our master or our no night uh, notification uh, input helper or input boolean and we're simply going to turn that on and we're just going to reverse that at 8 a.m. so at 8 a.m. we're just going to turn that night mode back off okay so if we want to manually turn night mode on or off so maybe we want to turn night mode on early we know we're going to turn in early we want to disable all the, the notifications I can manually do that by clicking that button in Lovelace like you saw me do um, all that's going to do it's going to turn off the master voice notification and then we're going to cancel the timer. Alternatively, again, if I want to disable that night mode and turn all my voice notifications on, again, all I've got to do is, is watch for that toggle and then I'm going to turn on my master voice notifications. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found something helpful and if so, uh, let me and YouTube both know by hitting that like button down below. Um, there are many different ways to accomplish the same thing that I did here. Uh, just like anything with home assistant, home automation, there, there are many ways to skin the cat. Um, let me know down in the comments if, if you think that there's a better or easier way to, to handle multiple voice notifications with snoozing and, and do not disturb modes. If you'd like to see any more of my videos, please hit that subscribe button down in the corner. And if you want to be notified every time I release a new video, click that little bell icon. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.